All right, round six from the Gibraltar Chess Festival. This game is between Nigel Short with the white pieces and GM Fabiano Caruana with the black pieces. This is a good game. Long game, so I'm going to go fast. So, Carol Khan, knight c3. Nigel sometimes plays um this advanced variation, two against the Carol Khan. I've seen him play... Uh, games like this before there's many ways you can go okay so knight c3 d5 knight f3 knight f6 and you know he's just forcing the issue with the pawn here got to do something either capture or gain tempo against the knight and you can capture here but that's not uh, too good as you the D takes then white is just comfortable at this point for example Queen E2 Queen takes E5 okay so <clears throat> Knight E2 and we see Nigel is steering toward a closed uh, position here Okay, mate is uh, threatened, so we don't want to overlook that. Caruana is threatening a mate in one. So there's d4, <clears throat> and now e6. Now what we have here is um, sort of a Carol Khan that is transposed into a uh, type of French defense. It looks like a French defense events variation where white ha black has not played c5 yet. And um, somehow the knight has magically uh, made it to e4. So it's kind of a strange uh, looking uh, setup here. It's hard, it's, it's hard to say if um, this is an inferior version for black or not. Because the knight being on e4 is um, pretty good if it can um, stay there or do something. Okay, so knight g3. We see black, excuse me, white working on that already to get rid of it. There's c5, right, just like in the French. Uh, the difference here is that white, excuse me, black has exerted the tempo already playing c6 first and then has to play c5 again. Usually in the Carol Khan, this bishop will get outside the pawn chain. So I have to regard that as a net plus to Nigel. But again, I'm not sure if the knight being on e4 kind of negates that the fact that black didn't get his bishop out the pawn chain earlier so bishop d3 knight c6 and now knight takes e4 d takes e4 bishop takes e4 c takes castle and now i have to give uh plus the white here so I think Nigel has outplayed um, Caruana in the opening. Okay. Caruana started off with the Carol Khan with the, uh, of course, the obvious intention to have this bishop outside the pawn chain. And he ended up in some type of French uh, advance variation with the knight on e4. But now that knight has been attacked on e4 and forced to trade itself off. And now white has full control over his e4 square as the d5 pawn has been removed okay so now the bishop sits pretty on the diagonal the c5 the c pawn is going from black so um white doesn't have to worry about this bishop being attacked by c4 okay this pawn gives white control of the first five ranks and a ready-made attack on the king side so caruana has to be very careful this d4 pawn is black's major plus in the position here. Okay, because this d pawn has a restrictive influence on the uh, queen side of white. <clears throat> black, excuse me, white slight lead in development doesn't mean too much as the position is still relatively uh, closed. Bishop d7, a3. So 
So again, with this pawn not really being able to do much, I did his, his moves like a3, because anticipation of the queen side castling again. There's a ready-made king side attack over here with this pawn here, bishop, knight to g5, this bishop here, etc. Queen to h5. So Carolina wants no part of the king side. So he wants to go over to the queen side. However, he must be weary of the opening up over there with this uh, semi-open c file. So a3, sometimes moves like b4, bishop b2, the attack on this pawn is possible. h6 so now since the white king is not going over there this could be a prelude to moves like g5 g4 driving the knight away from the um, defense of the e5 pawn so more defense to the e5 pawn rook comes to e1 rook d8 so there will be no queen side castling Okay, so we see defense over protection of your will in the works for uh, d4. And white is kind of doing the same with his e5 pawn, just over protecting those points. Those are critical points in both players' positions. A, <coughs> excuse me, a3, h3. Useful move, but uh, I don't know how necessary it was. Perhaps b4 can just be played at this point. Okay, I think white should be trying to attack this pawn here. So I like to plan um, b4, for instance, and bishop b2 attacking this pawn. I want to get this pawn out of here because I think white will have a nice plus if he could do that. So for instance, g6. And there's a couple of ways you could go about it. One is c3, just sack the pawn. And say play like D takes C3, right? Get that pawn out of here. And then play maybe a move like Queen D3. You got to watch this Rook, of course. But, I mean, the Bishop only can go here. It's not like this Bishop has some great discovery against the Queen. And once the Bishop moves, then the Queen can just capture. So forget about that move. You know, let Black try to win this pawn also. And then one of my favorite things, opposition. Rook here, looking at this queen. Bishop e3, attacking the queen. Queen d8. <clears throat> and then I think here, white just has a clear plus. You know, just get out the path of the rook. And white just has a clear plus. He is eliminated. <clears throat> he has eliminated the white pawn. Yes, pawn. Yes, material is equal, but look at all the space. White is occupying five ranks. So, and again, he's still ready to attack on the king side. So, I like that plan. H3 is okay. It's a little, little slow to me. And also, it gives, it gives Black a hook here. Because H3 is played and now G5 is, is an option. It's not as big of an option now because of this move, Rook D8. Now, if white, excuse me, if black had castle uh, queen side, then that would be more of a fear. And I think uh, Nigel's not really worried as much about it now since the king is right here in the middle. So he plays g6. <clears throat> Obvious idea is to try to win this pawn. There it is, b4. Bishop g7. And now, with that extra tempo loss with h3, Bishop can't come here. The bishop has to go and protect now. Okay, so he does that. Now, bishop d3 was possible. Just dropping the bishop back because you had the rook here. And a6. And he could have played bishop b2. Okay. I like that also. He played bishop uh, to f4, which is good also. He just simply overprotects. Uh, the pawn so that no harm can come to it. Knight e7 from Caruana. And basically this pawn is just going to drop. 
So Nigel just snatches it up and is now up a pawn, at least temporarily. Knight takes d4, and now we see the assault coming on the c4 pawn. But this pawn is protected right now by this bishop on e4, and the pawn is um, mobile. However, at this moment, excuse me, there's an attack on the knight right here from the rook. So that has to be dealt with. Knight returns. Bishop, excuse me, knight d5. And bishop d2, keeping the knight out of that square. Bishop b5 from Caruana, keeping this pawn from going to c4. So, bishop takes d5 happens, getting rid of that uh, piece. There's a4, and this is all about mobilizing this is all about uh, mobilizing the pawns. That's why that's why this knight is out here. Nigel keeps the pawns mobilized. He takes, takes, a4, c4. You see that? That's why those exchanges were made. Trading off one advantage for another. Because you might say, well, white lost a bishop pair. Yes, but he has his pawns mobilized. At this point, they can't move. This is, being, this is blockaded. Excuse me, the a, this bishop on a4 is blockading the pawn and crippling the uh, movement of these pawns. He comes here, and again, this pawn is, is stopped from moving. So he just gets rid of some hindrances. Okay. And now look how this bishop has been restricted. This is what was called playing against pieces. He played, he played against his bishop, and now the bishop is no longer on an um, intimidating uh, square. The bishop is on a passive square now. Okay, now Caruana is safe to castle kingside. There will be no kingside attack. You know, the queens are gone, but he's in an inferior position. He's down a pawn, and a pawn is a pawn is a pawn, right? Three to two, majority on the queen side, and one of these pawns, right, the C pawn, is the candidate. To become a queen. Okay. So after those exchanges. Um, and of course Nigel is doing what you're supposed to do. When you have a material. You know an advantage. Is simplify the position. Make it easier. To uh, bring home your advantage. The less pieces. The better. So after uh, a4. Bishop d7. C4. Rook d3, b5, I have restricting this bishop. Castle and rook e3 is played again. It's all about the simplification. And you know what I like about this game is that uh, Caruana played the Carol Khan. And one of the main ideas of the Carol Khan is to make sure that this light square bishop is good. Right, it comes to f5 and has a um, you know an impact in the game, and um, the bishop wind up being the worst piece in the game for black. So more simplification, and this was threatened by the way after this exchange, and uh, I find it interesting how Nigel Short is just. I mean, this this game is just fluid. I mean, he's demolishing Caruana here. There's no uh, counterplay or anything. It's just a straightforward, you know, uh, uh, drudging. Rook d1. Bishop. Just when you thought the bishop couldn't get any worse, it's worse. Bishop e8. Again, it's taking up a dominating position. As opposed to his counterpart. F5. And Nigel takes. He didn't have to take. But it's a preference thing here. He could have just put the bishop on d6 or something like that. It kept it closed. So that was one choice. For instance, rook c8. C5. Right where the position remains closed a little longer. So even though he has a dominated position it might be a little harder to make progress 
For instance, king f7, knight d4. And you got a lot of pressure on the position. And let's say g5, for instance. And um, I don't know, rook c1. Let's plan on moving this guy. So that was one way, keeping the position closed still. But here, you know what? He says, let's create another weakness and keep the position open <clears throat> so that he can penetrate with this uh, rook. So now Caruana has a free bishop, but now he has an isolated pawn. And he, now he offers the trade of the bishop here, because this is an asset now as the position begins to open. So Nigel's like, okay, let's get rid of the, at least a pair of bishops. Attack this pawn. And again, this poor bishop is just relegated to passivity the whole game. And there it goes. There's the candidate. So now a three to two is now turning it two to, into two to one on the queen side. Bishop e8. Good move. Good move. Tactics prevail. If rook takes d4, <clears throat> then simply c7. There's no way to stop the uh, the queening from happening. So he takes, pass pawns, lust to expand, right? That's what Nemzovich used to term it. The pawns lust to expand. They want to keep going up the board. B7. This forces the rook into a passive um, role. As opposed to Nigel's rook, which is extremely aggressive. Right? Rooks be long. Behind past pawns. This is all desperation. <clears throat> C5. And Nigel just simply attacks the rook. <clears throat> okay. Of course, if pawn takes D4, then this knight is going to capture here. And the idea with this is if, if bishop takes. Let's get rid of a graphic. The idea is if bishop takes. This bishop would just simply step here and attack the rook. And that's what happens. The rook moves. Queen is born. Queen is dead. And the rook is dead also with check. And uh, good, good technique here at the end by Nigel. Just keeps attacking. Forces the king to the uh, back rank. Cutting him off. And he forces the trade, right? Because now one of the bishops has to go. Again, you have an advantage. Simplify it down so that your advantage becomes uh, more marked and more obvious and easier for you to play. And notice this is disastrous for black because this king cannot participate in the defense. This pawn... Moving up is nothing because it never it, it can easily be captured. This uh, the king is right there in the square. Right, if we were or if we were to draw a diagonal here. Okay, that's the square. This king can just step in, right? It's white's move, so this pawn cannot. You know, it's white's to move. This pawn cannot queen. The king can stop it. And that's what he does. He steps in the square. King e8. The king still cut off from going this way. Okay. And now the king is taking over duties to watch this pawn. Now the rook can get back to real work. King cut off again. Okay. <clears throat> and you see some maneuvering here. And Nigel gets to a better place. He, so he cuts the king off, but he, he um, is able to get behind the pawn.
Okay, went in another pawn. And Caruana is lost here. He keeps playing on. Good move. There's no way to capture the rook and and stop the pawn from queening at the same time. So he plays that. So for instance, if he goes king there, instantly g7. And there's nothing. Bishop can't get back in time. So he played that. And then he resigned because there's still no stopping um, King, uh, excuse me, uh, G7. So, wonderful game by Nigel Short. Very clear and straightforward and direct, which is uh, typical of his style when he's playing at his best. And he did it against a uh, high-ranking uh, top 10, um, a uh, top uh, 2 grandmaster in the world in uh, Fabiano Caruana, who is usually very, very well uh, prepared. So that was a good game uh, by Nigel Short. So congratulations to him in round six of the Gibraltar uh, chess tournament. I hope you liked that. I hope you learned. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you later.